What's it like 30, 50, or 70 miles up? Under the direction of Dr. Marcus O'Day of the Geophysics Research Division at the Air Force Cambridge Research Center, leading scientists from all over America are brought together to answer this question and to study such properties of the upper air as temperatures, pressures, winds, and composition. These answers are needed to improve our radio and radar systems, to solve supersonic flight problems, and to gain other important scientific knowledge. One of their tools is the Araby rocket. After many months of painstaking effort, the equipment for this specific experiment arrives at the Air Force Missile Test Center Alaman Air Force Base, New Mexico. In this city of technicians and scientists, in the vast wastelands of central New Mexico, parts of the Araby are fitted together in preparation for the launching a few hours later. In the rocket assembly shop, seen here, the main body of the rocket is carefully lowered onto the trailer, which will carry it to the launching tower. Once there, technicians will add the instrument rack, containing the complex equipment to be used in this experiment. Dozens of Arabies, like this one, have been launched by all three armed services, each to add some new piece of information about the upper air. When the pieces are all assembled, our scientists will have answers to the problems to be overcome in our conquest of the upper air. Here, the main body is carefully clamped into position on the trailer to prevent any damage in transit. The trailer is then hooked to the tow truck, and both the rocket and the crew are ready for the final trip to the launching site. But let's take a closer look at the Aerobee. Let's see what makes it tick. The booster is an auxiliary propulsion unit containing a slow burning powder designed to give the tremendous push required to accelerate the rocket during the first thousand feet. Then the burned out booster falls away and the rocket is on its own. Next, the rocket motor into which the fuel and oxidizer are fed under pressure to ignite and continue propelling the rocket. This motor is contained in the tail assembly. Fins noted in the diagram are to stabilize the rocket in flight. One fin is black in order that any roll of the rocket may be recorded by cameras. Ahead of the motor are tanks containing the oxidizer, fuel and pressurizing gas. The nose section is the business end of the Araby. It contains the scientific instruments for the experiment, the telemetering beacon which sends readings back to the ground stations and a specially designed parachute to lower the nose section safely. While the rocket is being moved to the launching site, scientists and technicians assemble the instrument rack to be carried by the rocket. The purpose of today's experiment is to measure temperatures and pressures at altitudes up to 60 miles. Ion gauges and other instruments are being installed for these measurements. Before the final check on the instrument rack is completed, the rocket arrives at the launching site. As fire prevention and safety crews arrive at the launching pad, the Araby is moved into position for the racing.
scientists bring the telemetering beacon out to the launching site where it's carefully fitted into place. The last bolts are tightened and the beacon installation is completed. Then the instrument rack is attached. The technicians work slowly to prevent damage to the instruments because months of study and research have gone into their development and much depends on their performance. Meanwhile, fueling crews don the Man from Mars protective suits as they prepare to fuel the rocket. The bullet-like aluminum nose cone slides into position over the instrument rack and is firmly attached to the rocket body. Fairings are fitted over the electrical control cables. This completes the assembly of the various components of the Aero B rocket. Airtight rubber suits, necessitating a supply of bottled oxygen, are worn as protection against the dangerous fuels. Here, the suits are sprayed with water in order to lower the temperature inside. When all is in readiness, the fuel truck is backed into position and the crew prepares to fuel the rocket. First, the cap is removed from the fuel tank. Next, the hose is unreeled and the nozzle is screwed tightly into place. Then the fueling begins. When the fuel tank is full, the hose is carefully removed and put away to prevent spilling of the dangerous fluid. Then a danger sign is placed into position to show that the rocket contains fuel. Afterward, the launching pad is sprayed with water to neutralize any spilled chemicals. The process is duplicated in loading the oxidizer into the rocket with the same careful supervision. the rocket is ready to be raised to its launching position in the tower. The yoke is attached to the rail on which the rocket rests in preparation for the slow lifting process. is finally in launching position, clamps are removed and pull-away plugs are attached for the final instrument checks to be made by remote control from the blockhouse. This is Araby Command to all stations. On my mark, the time will be X minus one hour. Mark. Inside the blockhouse, scientists check their instrument panels, which indicate that the instruments in the rocket are operating properly.
these checks involve remote telemetering and tracking stations, such as Skillet Knob, standing high above the floor of the valley, 60 miles to the north. Twin Buttes, located 20 miles to the south. Sacramento Peak, 9,400 feet high and about 40 miles to the east. And Tula Peak, a small peak located 18 miles to the west. Here, banks of telemetering equipment receive and record signals from the rock. This is the valuable record that the scientists will use in their study of the upper air. Launching time draws near, we return to the blockhouse, which is the control center for the entire operation. Inside, scientists stand by their instrument panels, checking and rechecking to see that nothing has gone wrong with the rocket instruments. The firing officer clears the tower and orders the igniter attached to the booster. Job accomplished, the last man leaves the tower. This is Araby command to all stations. On my mark, the time will be X minus four minutes. Mark. The firing officer then orders that a red warning flare be fired to alert nearby tracking crews. Cameras, radar, telescopes, and observers. A weather balloon is released for a last wind check. This is Araby command to all stations. On my mark, the time will be X minus three minutes. Mark. This is Araby command to all stations. On my mark, the time will be X minus two minutes. Mark. This is Araby command to all stations. On my mark, the time will be X minus one minute. Mark. Seconds. 30 seconds. 25 seconds. 25 seconds. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. 15. 15. 14. 14 13, 13. 12. 12 11, 11. 10. 10 9. On. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. Three, two, one, fire. Missile away.
And now suddenly at the end of months of planning and work, a rocket is expended and the nose cone falls away, parachuting the instruments to Earth from 60 miles in the atmosphere. Dozens of tracking stations with specialized instruments carefully plot the gentle descent of the nose cone. Impact is plotted, and a spotter aircraft is dispatched. It's directed to the impact area, where the pilot drops a red smoke bomb to guide recovery teams. The nose cone will be carried back to the base, to remove rocket-borne recorders and to salvage other instruments for use in future Araby rockets. Back at the Air Force Cambridge Research Center, a group of scientists meet to discuss the results obtained by the latest Araby rocket and to plan the experiments to be included in the next. We are one more step up the ladder of knowledge, a ladder that leads to conquering the air miles above us, for defense in time of war, for advancement in time of peace. This is just the beginning. Thank you.